So the main event was Adam Cole and Bobby Fish against Jungle Boy and Dino Douche. And of course, Christian Cage is there to speak for them. Although Jungle Boy actually did part of this promo and wasn't bad. Adam Cole and Christian Cage were very good, but Jungle Boy wasn't bad. But with the dueling promo for the main event and then the tag team match. And I swear, everybody knows I like Adam Cole and Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong, the Undisputed Era, all those guys individually have worked with him in Ring of Honor. They're all very talented. And I've been salivating at the thought that maybe could we get the Undisputed Era reformed in AEW so we could get poor Adam Cole away from the Hardly Boys before they ruin him too. So I was hoping that this would be one of those instances where the opponents would elevate Jungle Boy and just keep Dino out of it as much as possible. And to that end, the first line that I wrote on my notepad when the bell had not even rung yet was, I hope the reptile doesn't fuck this up. And that was weirdly and eerily prophetic. When they started out, Jungle Boy was great. Fish and Cole were great. They were doing some wrestling spots. They're shining the baby face. Dino Douche got in for a second with his awkward kicks and strikes, but he tagged back out. And everything was okay for the first little bit. And then they did... They did a move. Did you see the move that... Dino Douche slams... I think it was Bobby Fish. Yes. Slams Bobby Fish and tags Jungle Boy. And Jungle Boy gets up on the top rope. The dinosaur turns his back to Jungle Boy and stands in front of Bobby Fish, who's laying there. Jungle Boy jumps off the top rope and does a double knee strike to the back of Luchasaurus's head that turned him... Jungle Boy, that is, in midair so that he could give Bobby Fish a senton. But what the problem was, was it looked like it was goddamn a knockout blow to the back of the dinosaur's head, and he missed Bobby Fish almost completely. So the dinosaur should have sold it. Did you see that? I did, of course. Are they getting way too cute for their own good to the point where that made no sense in the world? Remember, this, even though the Young Bucks are not actively wrestling in the match, is one of the Young Bucks... This is like their portion of the show. Adam Cole, Undisputed Era, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus. This all falls under their auspices, so that's why you get that here. Well, we were headed downhill. They did kind of an awkward heat spot on Jungle Boy to go to the break where... One of them tried to distract the referee while Jungle Boy hit the ropes and caught a knee in the back from the other heel, but it, the timing was off. It, it, they did, I, it, I don't think Jungle Boy got the picture on the thing at first, whatever. And then they go to break. They come back. They've had a little heat on Jungle Boy. He actually hit a hot tag. Great work by the heels in setting this up to where he could dive and they were trying to stop him. And the heels fed great for, again, Dino's comeback, awkward as it was. And then he makes a comeback and the heels feed for him and they take all these bumps for him. And then Dino Douche goes to the corner, gets up on the turnbuckles and glorifies and milks the people for so long. He lost the momentum of the comeback to leaving Jericho was screaming, stay on him out loud. like the like you give you give directions in a match like stay on him when somebody's fucking wandering around he was doing that on commentary because he turned around so long and the heels are having to wait for him anyway the fish and cole got to stand there while the dinosaur and jungle boy set up some goofy flip where jungle boy flips over the top of dino into the ring and they get fish up on jungle boy's shoulders and Dino completely whiffed a kick on Bobby Fish, even though they they switched the camera angle at a, a fortunate moment, you could still see it, especially because Fish sold it by the since it never touched him or came close to him. 
fish couldn't sell it because he didn't feel anything and dino's foot was back on the mat before fish sold the kick so the whole thing went to shit since Dino Douche got the tag. And then suddenly, Jungle Boy and Adam Cole were in the ring having a singles match. Dino Douche was on the floor kneeling, watching, down by the ring apron, leaning on it, watching the match. You could see that he was cognizant and coherent and there was nothing stopping him from getting up on the apron to take the tag. He was just watching, waiting for his next spot. And there was a deal where it, 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 Adam Cole went for the Panama Sunrise on Fish, but then it was Dino's turn to come in and do something, so he rolls back in and catches Cole coming off the ropes for the Sunrise, catches him and power bombs him. And then the guy who gave the power bomb, Dino Douche, rolls back out to the floor and kneels back down on the floor behind the apron and sits and watches Bobby Fish make the save. Why is he selling, I'm writing? He's letting the heels do more shit and not even up on the apron trying for the tag, and he's the guy who power bombed the guy to begin with, but then he rolled out of the ring and sold on the floor to let Jungle Boy do more of his shit, and the heels take advantage of jungle boy did did this fucking clown ever go to wrestling school or did they just find some schlub sleeping in a dumpster and put this fucking mask on him i believe he went all the way through wwe developmental so he never went to wrestling school i don't i can't speak about what he did before wwe i would assume he did because he seems more like an indie mark than he does like some bodybuilder they found the train uh, but he uh, went through developmental at some point well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't teach the dinosaur how to work. So, then suddenly the Hardly Boys come down the aisle sneaking and, and making shushing uh, pantomimes to the camera like, don't tell anybody we're here. And they come down and stare at the dinosaur, but here comes Christian Cage out with a chair and they do a comedy chase around the ring. And when they run away from the ring, Adam Cole went with them. Why did he go with them? <laughs> He's not only is he in the match, but they were in control a minute ago. But suddenly, because Christian Cage comes to chase the Hardly Boys out of ringside, Adam Cole leaves Bobby Fish, and they all the heels run back to the entranceway, and Jungle Boy gets the snare trap on Bobby Fish, and he taps out because Cole left and ran off to go with the Hardly Boys. And then everybody just stood around and stared at each other off the air. What? It, they're beating fish to death. They're, I'm afraid now they're going to break up Cole and fish instead of Cole and the fucking Cucamonga kids, and we've got to watch Adam Cole lower himself to be a comedy stooge to a couple of middle school children who are both... Their chronological ages don't reflect their fucking mental ages because emotionally they're 12. And the fucking, their physical size puts them more at 10. But they're middle-aged jack-offs and Cole is going to be with them instead, I'm afraid, instead of with Fish because he's leaving Fish to hang out to dry. I can't imagine who thought any of this finish would be in any way remotely good. And that's so that's what we ended up with. So my favorite wrestler from NXT has been in AEW for a month and I can't stand any of his matches. That was the close of that program. What'd you think? I can't add too much. I agree. At first I wasn't excited about Bobby Fish and single stuff. And then he started winning me over the thing with him and Punk. I really liked him and Danielson. And then I thought, okay, naturally, they'll do something with him and Cole. And look, I'm not a fan of the Buck stuff, but I figured there'll be some teasing back and forth, some silliness. But eventually, we'll get something. Bobby Fish has been made to look like a, like a scrub on TV. Who knows what's going to happen now? But I think, by and large, this last segment, the last segment on Rampage is tough to get through no matter what, especially if you're trying to watch it live, and you're 41 and you have a bunch of kids. That's usually like, I'm going to bed. I'll watch it the next day. But... Look, this was, did this match fit on Raw? 
That would be my question. The Young Bucks, their bad comedy, the running away from the chair, which was ridiculous in slow motion. All of this. This is the part of AEW that fits on WWE TV. And there was a lot more of this early on. But there's stuff like this that would fit on WWE TV. And if someone told you it was Vince McMahon doing it, you wouldn't be like, oh, that doesn't seem like Vince. It would make sense. And then there's the other stuff. The Punks, the Danielsons, the other guys who are doing things that are serious. Even though Danielson had to interact with the Dark Order, he was serious. He was serious. And he made that whole thing serious. But it's this stuff. The bad acting, the lame stuff. And I I may be completely wrong, but the way the fans turned on Cody, I wouldn't be surprised in the next year or so if you're going to start hearing more Booze for the Young Bucks, and not like you're a heel, I'm booing you more. I'm really sick of you guys, so I'm booing you. You would you would have to think that now, again, with more professional quality upper card talent coming in, that they're being shown up more and more, and they never change their shit. All the matches are the same. The fucking goofy outfits, the lack of seriousness of anything... That seems to me to be the perfect recipe for people that you would get tired of looking at. And I, I think it's it has to come. They're never a part of the best thing on the show. I mean, despite what's in the Observer. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that pay-per-view, they weren't a part of the best thing. It's been months since, what was the last thing they were did, they did on TV? An angle, a promo, a match that was really like, wow, that's great. No, their matches all blend into the next one. And their promos and angles are all silly. And then all this other stuff stands out. AEW's had moments that will now stand out. I still have on my DVR Punk in Chicago, that debut. I'll probably save that forever. What a moment. You can go watch that. You feel it when it happens. Yeah. The Young Bucks ain't getting those moments. I can go do a match and go do a bunch of flips and plan it out and tease moves that they did three years ago. And there's going to be a segment to the audience that likes it and an even smaller segment that'll give it five stars. But I think a lot of the things happening right now, the Young Bucks are kind of getting left behind. Whether they sign a renewal or not, they're getting left behind right now. Well, you know, the one mistake they've made since the start of this is they were not able to figure out a way to tell Tony Khan that he should not sign Danielson and Punk and any top talent that would show them up. When they started, it was all their little play friends and they were going to get to do whatever they wanted and they stood out in a sea of green because they did all the flips they just did them better than everybody else now that there's quality talent that has come in and is outperforming in a serious fashion uh all the stupid shit that they and their fucking goofy stooges do they haven't figured out a way to take the attention back and i don't think they can because as we mentioned they don't have the talent to do this shit right if they couldn't be Two little fucking grade school kids that work like the road warriors win everything and take nobody else seriously. That's the only way they get over. And that gets old after a while because it wasn't funny to begin with, but for people with, you know, the senses of humor that are easily tickled, it worked for a while, but it's getting less and less entertaining and they don't know how to do anything else. It's just lame. It's just completely lame, but I don't. You know, I don't despise the Young Bucks. I don't wish ill on them. In fact, I wish they would research a new career. One that would be lucrative, one that could help them and their families, and one that can give them maybe some skills, skills that are good for people who may not, I don't know, you may not want them to coexist with everyone in society. You may kind of want to keep them locked in a room. I really don't know. But fortunately, we know a place that anyone, no matter who you are, whether you're a good person or a douchebag, We know a place where anyone can get a new skill and learn that skill right now. That's right. And if you're a douchebag that wants a new skill, (laughs) then I can think of no better place to go than our fine friends at Code Academy. Because, you know, we've, I said it at the top of the program, nobody knows how this internet works, the World Wide Web, all of these various HTTPs and HTMLs and WWWs, not nobody, even the people who sell these products and services, they don't know how the shit works. That's why the people at Code Academy within the next 15 years are going to be the people that rule the world. 
The people at Code Academy are going to be like the Knights Templar. The people at Code Academy are going to be the secret society behind the scenes that runs the world because they're the only ones that know how to crack the secret code that allows you to get your emails on time or allows you to order your your anal lube from a fine quality well, retailer online. Let's not focus on things like that. Let's talk about well, the I'm actual saying, skills the whole, you can use and learn. The whole world is running on the internet now and all this technology, and nobody knows how it works except for the secret society of Code Academy graduates. And those people are going to be in the spot to control life and civilization as we know it. Folks, over 50 million people already know that Code Academy is the best way to learn to code. I don't know that 50 million people know this code, but they probably figured out that it's the best way to learn it if it's capable. However, Code Academy not only teaches you job-ready coding skills, but also helps you build unique projects for your portfolio, such as I mentioned a few weeks ago, that cordless extension cord. It'll teach you how to build things like that, unique projects. You can earn certificates. Certificates of deposit? I don't know what the certificates are, but you can earn them. But at Code Academy, you can learn at your own pace and get qualified for in-demand jobs, such as replacing innocent technicians of internet services that go to houses where they're then held in the basement until their shit works. You can choose what to learn from Code Academy, from building basic websites to artificial intelligence. Almost everybody I come in contact with these days has artificial intelligence. Nothing about their intelligence is real. Everything else you could want to know about coding and the, the ramifications from doing things in code and how things can, can possibly be gone wrong and, and you can... You can tap into other governments' systems and control the nuclear codes. Whatever the case may be, you'll be writing real working code in minutes. If you write real working code, but you don't have anything to plug it into, Brian, does it still work? I mean... Yeah, good enough. None of this you is how anything works. Languages, including Python and the ever-popular Hitomolsis. And the squall and the JavaScript. If you're not sure where to begin, Code Academy will point you in the right direction. They'll say, go right over there and put your money down, and then go right out there and head out the door. You can take Code Academy's programming personality quiz to get tailored career advice. I took their personality quiz, Brian, and I'll have you know that their tailored career advice to me was to get away from them and don't even bother trying to have a career because I wasn't suited for it. That's not the kind of advice they'll give the listeners no, they, of the show. They'll give you very thoughtful advice that will help you along the path, along this road of Code Academy love? Co code Academy. -ing. Code Academy. Co Cody, <laughs> code Academy. -ing. No, they, that was really, that was the best advice they could give me because they saw that I just had no no strength in this whatsoever. But if if you're not a dumb shit, folks, they'll they'll pat you on the back. You'll get the instant feedback. I've, I've mentioned the instant feedback like, this sucks, and stop it now. Because your code is tested as soon as you submit it. So you always know if you're on the right track or if you're woefully inept. Folks, you can build your portfolio and make yourself more marketable to future employers, land your dream job in web development, programming, computer science, data science, driving an ice cream truck, whatever you need to do, they'll teach you how to do it because this is where all the secrets are. Join over 50 million people. There's that number again. Where are these 50 million smart people? I can't find three that can grab their ass with both hands. But you can join these over 50 million people hiding somewhere that are learning to code with Code Academy and see where coding can take you by getting 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to codecademy.com and use the promo code experience, that's C O D E C A D E M Y, codecademy.com, promo code experience for 15% off a brand new career where you can have people like me cussing you because you can't make their Wi Fi work. Codecademy.